Now we've been talking a lot about blur. Let's move on to talk about sharpening. Before we get into the filters used for sharpening, you should be aware of the sharpen, sharpening tool on the toolbar. The sharpen tool can be used to sharpen an image. It is more of a manual hand-drawn process rather than a filter. Feel free to explore the sharpen tool on your own. It works like the paintbrush, except instead of applying paint or color, it sharpens an area of an image as you paint with it. When taking photographs, it is the photographer's goal to capture images with correct focus. Sometimes it is either not possible to capture what he or she is intending, or some type of operator error occurs. In instances like this, it might be necessary to fix or sharpen an image. Some key reasons to sharpen an image include to crisp a slightly out of focus image, to shrink pixels in preparation for final output, usually for offset lithography printing, and to attempt to fix blurriness from camera shake. This is an example of the first reason to sharpen. Here is a slightly out of focus image. This image, which is a sample image included with your textbook, has slight blurriness to it. It isn't anything too drastic or distracting, but by, simple, by simply applying a smart sharpen filter, the image will look more in focus. And you can see that when we look at the image on the left hand side, we don't inherently see it as being out of focus. But when we compare it to the image on the right side that has a smart sharpen filter applied, you can see that it becomes much more crisp and clear. If we jump over to Photoshop, I have this image that again is supplied by your textbook open. We can apply a filter that, to this by choosing the filter menu, sharpen, and then in this example we're going to choose smart sharpen. You can leave the default settings or you can adjust them and so by default it made a very minor change to the image. You can increase the amount, the radius, and reduce noise. You can um, remove the lens blur, a motion blur, blur or a Gaussian blur. Um, you can see when I changed it to Gaussian Blur that you can clearly see a difference. Hopefully that's translating in the video. And so without doing anything else, I have removed the Gaussian Blur from the image. You can also increase, let's say, the radius. And as you slide it to the right, you'll see that you get more and more crispness or attempted crispness to the image. Um, if you go too far, obviously it looks out of whack. It doesn't look appropriate. But you can slide it just slightly back and forth until you get the amount of sharpness back into the image that you were intending. And so if we compare this to the original, turn it off for a second, you can see that now in comparison the original looks quite blurry and the result looks quite sharp and clear.